You're such an asshole. Morning, children. It's time to get the old asshole consulting GDP contribution machine going on. I have my favorite mug from Wall, South Dakota. Got a little cowboys on it. I got the five cent coffee, which they always advertise. Can't recommend Wall Drug though, I can't. When you, if you ever drive out there, you ever go to Mount Rushmore, Wall Drug is on the way. And um, yeah, a whole bunch of crazy crap. I mean, if you want to, you might just be tired driving across I-90 and like, oh, I want to get out of the car. Yeah, then go to Wall Drug, but otherwise you're not missing anything. So. Although I do have nice coffee mugs. All right, <clears throat> Eric writes, hi Cappy, simple question here. It's not simple. Okay, the question is simple, but then the answer is a little bit lengthy. Simple question here. How do I become a man that repels feminist, modern-day liberated women and attracts old-school women? I've read Adam Pickett's 28 Characteristics of Modern Men. He provides the link here below. If I don't forget, I'll provide it down in the description below. What's your take on modern man? All right, so we got kind of three questions here. I took a little bit of notes. All right. It's not hard to repel feminists because uh, a lot of feminists <clears throat> hate men, and they especially hate real men. Um... So, I, I mean, it's, it's not going to be that hard. You're, well, you're just not going to go where they are. Uh, feminists go to, you know, women's... I mean, look at their, their career and their profession. I mean, we're talking true ones. Not one just, I support the equal treatment of women. Well, yeah, okay, well, then everyone's a feminist. But if you're talking the, the functional, effective ones, you're not going to run into them. You're just not because they're an academia or nonprofits or... Uh, helping out complete strangers because they want the care and attention of desperately poor and, and, and mentally ill people. Um, you're, you're not going to go, you're not going to run into them. You're, you're, your paths shan't ever twain. That's the word. Um, so, yeah, you're just not going to run into them. But if you want to push them away, like let's say you're online, you happen to, your life Venn diagrams into them, it, it's two real simple things. One, be truthful. Just tell people the truth, all right? Uh, that that right there will not only get rid of radical leftist, not simple feminists, which just I'm for the equal treatment of women, but you'll get rid of the evil feminists, but you'll get rid of all evil people in your life, and that's good. Just just tell people the truth, no matter how blunt it is. I mean, don't 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 throw your dick in the mashed potatoes while you're at Christmas. You know, like, oh, fuck the you know what about Trump? Am I right? You know, wait for the right opportunity and moment to tell But if you're on a date or you put together your profile, just put it on your dating profile. Conservative libertarian or I do not date liberal women or I do not date leftist women. I don't environmental. You'll, you'll screen them out. You'll screen them out. Just being truthful about yourself and being truthful about the world. They cannot tolerate the truth. Um, <clears throat> and then another thing is demand excellence uh, out of yourself and demand excellence in others. The people that you hang out with. And that right there will scare away from because feminism is not modern day, not old day, but modern day feminists. They're about the avoidance of excellence. They are about the celebration, I wouldn't even say of normalcy. They're about the celebration of loserdom. Um, they are lazy. They are slothful. That's why they go and major in women's studies and gender studies and all that. That's why they, instead of replace, you know, not that I'm a religious guy, but instead of having a religion that requires discipline, effort, work, sacrifice, um, you know, uh, uh, fasting, stuff like that. And that's pretty much every, you know, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, I don't know about Buddhist. Uh, but real religions require some element of sacrifice and becoming a better person, adhering to some kind of higher standard or code. Uh, the isms of the political variety, feminism, environmentalism, genderism, whatever, is the celebration of loserdom and an excuse to not work. That's basically it. That I should, you know, fat acceptance is a perfect example. I shouldn't have to do anything, you know, from even for my own sake and health. I shouldn't eat broccoli or exercise. Big is beautiful. Slut walks. You name it. It's just a celebration. You can't even say hedonism. I wish it was hedonism because hedonism is fun. But this is just, you want to stuff your gullet, you want the government to pay for everything, and you want some bullshit make work job. That's that's what the, I want to say all feminists are, but but I'd say the majority of them, yes. Uh, certainly those in academia and the ones you're trying to, to fear. So if you're demanding excellence, like let's go climb this mountain or let's go work out or let's diet or let's uh, consume 
uh, classical good media, be it a movie or a book, or let's, you know, they're going to want to go watch some independent f French film that's about lesbian Guatemalan refugees, and you'd be like, fuck, I don't want to... So, don't worry. You like water will repel oil. Uh, you guys aren't going to mix, uh, so I, I won't lose any sleep over, God, how do I keep feminists out of my life? Don't worry, they won't tolerate you. They'll insist on being in your life through your checkbook and government and taxes, but personally, no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna. I don't have feminists showing up at, you know, at my place of work or <clears throat> coming out to, not a lot, not a lot of women's studies majors on top of Black Mountain there over in Las Vegas. Not a lot of women's studies majors out there whitewater rafting on the Yampa River, right? So you don't have to worry. They stay where the food is and where the electricity is and, and public transportation is. How do you attract old school women? Oh, that's, I got to take a sip of the coffee. All right. That's hard. It's hard because there's just not that many. Um, and I don't know how Gen Z is going to be coming out. wrote an article, um, what Gen Z can learn from the millennials. And I don't know, and, and hopefully you're a little bit younger, but... Baby boomers, Gen Xers, definitely the millennials. Uh, the idea of traditional men and women, or um, women, but as men as well. I mean, you're not the only one complaining. Why can't I find a, a decent old school traditional wife? A lot of gals like, what is with the limpy arms and the salmon jeans? Why can't I find a real man? Um, <clears throat> so women are suffering on this aspect too. <clears throat> How do you attract old school women? You got to be an old school guy. So be physically attractive. You be a fucking man. All right, women will shit test you consciously or not, and and that's it's a test. They don't even know they're doing it, and you just gotta be a man. A girl says, "Well, yeah. no, I've even gone so far." Sometimes when I was I was in my younger thirties and I was single, and um, I was dating. You know, you can date the thirty-three year old milf. You can date the twenty-three year old chicky babe, and man, these. I didn't have time for it, and these, you know, occasionally, more than once, there'd be the little teeny bopper college girl like cancel. I say, you're not going to cancel because if you do, we're never going out again, and you're going to knock that bullshit off. Like, you just call them out on their bullshit. And, and even if rude, and, you know, like, oh, my, you know, I don't know, man. like, I, well, then fine, then fine, you know. Well, I don't want to, you know, I'm not sure if I'm ready to, well, fine, you can go home, but we're not dating again. Yeah, I mean, just, just, you cut through the bullshit. Not even because you're being manly. You're just sick and tired of the crap. I mean, I almost got to the point I was thinking I had, I must have had a, was it plenty of fish or match or something? I'm like, if you're not going to sleep with me by the third date, don't even reach me. <laughs> and it just saves you pain and agony. Anyway, uh, you want to just, just be a man. And you don't tolerate shit. You go do your thing. Um, you lift weights, you put yourself together. Had another request not too long ago about dressing. I'm not a big guy for fashion, obviously. Uh, but even in the dating world, I, I don't know if, it, you know if it really pays off. I know wearing a suit didn't help jack all. <laughs> Learning a dance did. Um, so that's another thing, is that you have to have some kind of skill. And, and I, I'm not talking, this goes beyond having your... Um, your prof uh, profession and career. You need some kind of hobby or a set of hobbies that are interesting, of interest to you, um, where you pursue excellence. <clears throat> and you could display excellence. A girl's like, oh, look, you know, you're adding ingredients, you're adding spice to your dish, trying to sell it to the customer. And if you just serve the girl a slab of meat, hey, there you go, it's not seasoned, it's not cooked right, you don't have no garnish, you don't have any side dishes, you don't have a chutney on top or something. Well, what girl, what person wants to eat that? So you gotta, you gotta prepare a dish. You have to have multiple flavors. And so this is the number one thing about finding an old school traditional woman is you go do your thing. You do not try, the first mistake, all these go, do I find a nice girl? Do I meet her? Yeah. Stop looking. You like, for two reasons. One, you're not gonna find her. You don't find women going out looking for them. I mean, you, you'll see them, you'll find them, they're not going to be the right one. Uh, you, you just go do your thing, become who you are, and then you will meet girls along the way and girls will be attracted to you. Right? In other words, spending two hours at the gym will get you more girls, even if there aren't any there, than spending two hours at a nightclub, even though they're all there. Right? Uh, the second thing, um, what was the second thing? 
pursue the, um, oh, you're gonna die. And I can't think of anything worse. Like, there was this meetup, I was so bored last night. I went to two Dungeons and Dragons meetups, or, or board game meetups, but they're full. <clears throat> I went to a cryptocurrency meetup, <clears throat> uh, but they, they, you know, they didn't set up. I didn't see anybody there. Um, and then I went, there was, I tried to go to this, uh, it's, what was it? How to get laid without being creepy? Look it up. I'm like, oh God, I gotta see this, but I couldn't find parking. I'm not coming up with excuses. Minneapolis sucks that much. Uh, you don't want to be those guys. I was looking like who was going in attendance. I'm looking at these 40 something, sometimes 50 something year old men who are still trying to chase the pussy. Dude, you're gonna die. So go do your thing. Become the world's most interesting man, and girls will not necessarily flock to you, but you're going to do a hell of a lot better that way. Not to mention, you want long-term, you want to meet a girl, you know, this isn't a fling where you just got to fake alpha, fake being a badass for 48 hours. You want this girl to actually like you, marry you, have the kids and the family and everything if you're looking for a traditional guy. Well, then you better be cool and traditional, period, at your core. So do not chase the women's. Do not chase the pussy. Don't go to nightclubs. <clears throat> I'm not saying don't go, you know, like occasionally go, sure. Oh, geez, that was loud, Mr. Fucking FedEx man. Uh, but I do not waste your time, your precious finite life um, chasing girls. Go and become a man. Develop yourself into the, your version of the world's most interesting man. Because then at minimum, you will have not wasted your life and time. Like you say, well, I didn't get girls, but by gosh, you know, I went, I did this, I did that, I traveled, I, you know, my hobby is riding motorcycle. I even picked up golf recently. It's not terribly impressive. It's not even sexy, I don't think. Uh, but it's fun. I got to do it. I don't, I, you didn't waste your life chasing fucking tail, right? You don't end up like these guys who are in the 40s and 50s going to a fucking seminar on how to get laid without being creepy. <laughs> And God bless the woman who did, they put that together. She had 34 people signed up. I was like, holy shit, she's making money. She's making bank. So, all right. And then finally, this isn't how to attract an old school woman, but just going for Expect absolutely nothing. You, you have to acknowledge the statistics of how many women want to be a traditional, not necessarily stay-at-home mom or even stay-at-home wife, but are all about the idea of the captain and first officer relationship that you are the man she is the woman we're gonna have traditional roles we're gonna have a traditional relationship or traditional marriage um yes i'll take your advice but i'm the final arbiter of you know they are fewer and fewer as the generations keep coming online so depending on how old you are i would not don't hold your breath you know, it's it's almost like getting a traditional woman would be secondary uh, to you just going and living your life and having fun. Uh, obviously, it would be nice in your situation, <clears throat> but don't don't expect it. All right, don't and don't let it get you down. When you can't you go, well, yeah, you 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 are you're not looking for a diamond in the rough. You are looking for. I'm trying to think of what's rarer than diamonds, palladium or one of those rare earth metals. I mean, it's just. You know, it is very much like going panning for gold it, or, or going looking for dime. You're going to waste a lot of time, a lot of time. And is that time going to be better spent? So, and should you just go to the store and buy one? I mean, have everybody else go, oh, I'll go, you know. I face the same thing with agates, I'm a big agate hunter. And you could find them out there. It takes a long time and you could find them. And man, I got some really nice pieces. I'm really proud of them. I found them myself. But man, sometimes it's just easier to go because all the old timers bought them. Or found them, they, or they bought them. They have these like great, great collections, and you, you get an agate like that big, and it's like only one hundred twenty dollars. Like you got this crappy agate, you spent eight hundred dollars in gas and time on. But anyway, so yeah, don't don't expect uh, that. Now, you wanted to know about Adam Pickett's twenty eight characteristics of modern men, and so let's just go through them and what I think about them. All right, so this is Adam Pickett. You can visit him at Pushing Rubber Downhill. He's a friend of mine in Holland. He was in Australia, but then he got out. And uh, he has a website, pushingrubberdownhill.com. You can visit the site. He has a book called Pushing Rubber Downhill. And uh, if you don't know who Adam is, he is he's older than me. He's therefore wiser than me. And it's not necessarily because he's older than me. It's because he's much more experienced. And if you read his book, Pushing Rubber Downhill, you'll find out why. Um, 
And yeah, so it, it, this guy has done more than you have. And remember how I talked about adding flavor and creating a dish? Adam Piggott is a very well prepared dish with many flavors, many sides. And uh, he, he would make a good role model for many of you younger men. So, I mean, read the book, Pushing Rubber Downhill. That would almost, just like uh, uh, Jack O'Donovan's uh, book, uh, The Way of Men is a must. So too is Pushing Rubber Downhill. So I strongly recommend that. All right, first trade, the modern man is moderate. He's talking about, what was it? You don't want to be an exaggerator, you don't want to be a teetotaler. <clears throat> um, yeah, I agree with that. You don't want to uh, be extreme in any of your life, except for passions maybe you're really serious about. But, for example, I like running, but I will never run a marathon. Uh, he's also talking about booze, cigarettes, vice, things like that. Modern man shaves every day. Uh oh, oh, doobie dabby. Ah, uh, I disagree. Um... Because I've had some gals say, like, oh, I like it. I like it when you look like shit. <laughs> really? Uh, I do. If I do go out, though, I will shave. I, I don't know if that's a necessary one. The modern man does not apologize. That is correct. You do not apologize. Uh, because you, more often than not, you haven't done anything wrong. And if you are apologizing, it's for just to make people feel better. To get them to shut their fucking yap. Uh, but, you, I, God, I don't know the last time I apologized. Even when I've been wrong, it's kind of been, yeah, fuck you. You know, that's a... Uh, the modern man works out. Absolutely. That should be number one. That should be number one. Uh, not because it attracts women, although there is that. But that really does separate the men from the boys. Had I known back in my teens and 20s that, you know, you had to work out. Hey, let's put it this way. I graduated six months early in college. That's how viciously I attacked college. Knowing what I know now, I would have taken, like, an extra two years. I would have graduated in five and a half years and spent that time working out. Uh, probably relaxing more, <clears throat> but um, that is how vital work. I'd say working out today, depending on working out, is more important than going to college. I would almost yeah, that is working out in general is more important to go to college. Unless you're going for chemical engineering or a real degree, I'd say working out is more important than college. Um, so if you had to choose, do I go to class or do I take an extra class and it's going to crimp on my my workout schedule? Nope, you don't take the extra class. The modern man never orders, orders a bottle of wine that can be opened without a corkscrew. True. <laughs> I guess that's more comical. I understand Mr. Piggott is a bit more of a connoisseur. He ran a, a restaurant and bar and nightclub. I have not, but I'm not a big wine guy. The modern man rides a motorbike. I agree there. Uh, I know some of you have concerns about safety, especially if you have kids. Uh, you should at least ride it once. The modern man has traveled. I agree with that. I know a lot of you have a budget. Uh, too bad you can travel cheap. You can do a road trip with your buddies and split gas and sleep in the car. The modern man does not waste time or money on a college degree. I agree. Again, depends on the degree. Um, you know, and especially, I think in Australia it's way cheaper. In Europe it's way cheaper. And he's even saying don't waste your time or money on a degree. Um, but in the United States, where you idiots keep voting to go, well, we need more government money. Why is tuition so high? Uh, this is increasingly true, uh, but you do need an education or training or a skill of some kind. So I kind of, you know, it, it does depend on the degree. The modern man spends less than he earns. That's, that's just common sense. That's true. The modern man is confident. Yes, but here's where the confidence comes from. Are you a real man? Or are you just a hollow shell like these saps that I was... God, I wish I could have seen those guys at that meetup group. I just wanted to see it. Are you looking for a woman to fill in this empty hole in your life to define you? You should have a suite, a portfolio of accomplishments, hobbies, achievements, and interests that when you go into the real world, you say, I'm one... Okay, this is going to sound incredibly arrogant and cocky, but I know it's a shocker coming from me. <clears throat> When I walk into a social gathering, and this is going to sound but I'm being truthful and not funny and arrogant. When I walk into a social gathering, it's not that I'm sizing people up, but my goal is to find somebody that's interesting. Somebody I could talk to, something that could tell me something I don't fucking know. Right? It's almost impossible. And the reason why is usually I'm the most interesting guy in that room. I know it sounds arrogant and cocky, I know it's, no, it's true. 
you would listen to these people's conversations. It's about work. It's about paying off their student loans. It's about the mortgage. It's about the house. It's about their children playing fucking boring. Oh, he took your tap jazz of ballet. He's so good at it. Um, and then the guys, it's unmentionable. I, it, okay, you're a, you're a what? What do you got? You're a project manager. You do this. You, you're a mortgage guy. You're a, you're a manager. You're a director. You commute just like everybody else. Um, I'm not. <laughs> what did you do last? That's a great. What did you do? Well, last week I hit the gym. I worked. I played some video games. I drove back from South. Why were you coming from? Oh, I was spent two months out in the American South. Why do you do that? Well, I don't like winter. Oh, you could do that. that. Yeah, and you could see where the path would go. And uh, usually nine times out of ten, I'm the most interesting guy there. And then. Then what's really cool, I'll tell you another story. I, I won't mention his name, but there was one time I was in Vegas. <clears throat> and here's this old man, 75. And I'm lining up some hiking and this and that. And he says, what do you do? Oh, I'm going to go hiking. He says, oh, where are you going to go hike? I said, oh, I'm going to go do uh, what was it, Turtle Neck Peak. He's like, oh, maybe I'll come with you. And, and I, oh, nice old man. Nice old man. Oh, look, it's pretty intense. It's a two-mile short hike up, but... Uh, it, it's up. I think it's a 1,500 foot elevation gain. I, and then he looks at me. He's like, I might be able to keep up if you slow down. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. I hike the Andes. <laughs> and then find out. You know, the old Claremeister thinks he's pretty cool. This guy could squash my nuts. He was an F-4 fighter pilot in Vietnam. Got shot down. Flew for the airlines. Has a, a an amazing... Uh, museum of uh, airplane memorabilia and airplane history he has like Orville and Wright, uh, Orville and Wilbur Wright's I got a couple patents they said, and and he does this and he does that. There was some some else major he did, uh, but I looked at this guy. I'm like, holy shit! Now that's rare, but that's the guy you want to be. That's the guy because you want to walk in. And then get that young whippersnapper to shut the fuck up about his pretty cool and mentionable life. But then you get that guy to shut up like, holy shit. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Um, man, is, anyway, do you think me or this guy have, a, have an issue with confidence? You think we're worried walking into a place? They think we're bored out of our fucking skulls. And as, you know, you take... 19-year-old cabbie who had jack fuck all shit on his inventory of awesomeness, you know. Yeah, he was nervous. He didn't know. He got to try. Maybe I was a little bit confident because I was arrogant back then. Uh, but now, you think if I had to go back and deal with dating or just any... I don't... Hey, how are you? Well, that's quite impressive. A lot of times you just let people talk and... I met one guy... And he was trying to tell me how impressed... Not he was trying to impress me, telling me that he got promoted to is it mortgage brokering. And and I always for I'm always for people that works. And yeah, he was making forty dollars an hour. I'm like, oh, that that's impressive. You know, I, good for you. And, and it's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, now what? So you work at a job just like everybody else. You know, very well compensated. But uh, that that guy was not confident. He had to puff his chest a little bit. So a silence, I mean, gosh, almighty silence is, the guy who's quiet is probably the one who's got the most accomplishments because he's just bored, just bored listening to the normies. The modern man has to spend time alone. Absolutely, um, you need to be comfortable with yourself. And the truth is to gain confidence to become the world's most inter interesting man, you're just going to have to go where no man or very few people have gone before. You're going to have to go hike up those mountains. You're going to have to ride those long motorcycle rides. Because normal people, boring people, conformists, inferior men, just do what everybody else does and there's always people around. If you want to galvanize yourself, you want to forge yourself into a more interesting man, uh, you just have to go on adventures, on, uh, not sagas, what do they call them? You have to go on, oh. Missions, not missions. You have to go on calling. Some you have to go into the wilderness on your own and blaze your own path, and you will come back 
more wise. And um, and one of those things, you're just going to be by yourself a lot. You're just going to be by yourself a lot. Because the, the vast majority of people are plugged into the machine trying to pay off their student loans and their McMansion mortgage that wifey poo wanted them to have. The modern man does not eat with his mouth open. I don't know. Okay. Uh, the modern man knows how to cook. I... I because he's got me on this one. Adam Pickett's got me on this one. He's a good cook. I do not know how to cook. I can cook. I've been cooking more. And not out of like, oh, I should cook because Adam Pickett said so. I'm cooking because I did some math and it takes less time to cook. Plus, I want to save some money. I've been getting really, not really spoiled, but life got too easy. I don't ever want to get too comfortable. So I want to like save money and kind of like financially fast. <clears throat> the modern man is not offended, true. Um, that's a hard one. But you get to this zen level of look where the insult is coming from and then realize that, you know, going back to, you know, if a feminist said, oh, some evil right-wing Nazi white male, you know, yeah. two out of three ain't bad, you know. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't, it's not sinking to their level. People, parents, adults, you don't want to sink to their level. That, that's not it. It's that you don't want to waste your time and you have to understand how inferior these people are to not have them get a rise out of you. Um, perfect example, not to do gossip, but a while ago, someone said, oh, do you hear um, Bernard Chapin? He did this video on you. He's just totally slamming you. I'm like, cool. All right, I got more stuff to do. It's not, you know, funnily, ironically enough, it probably helps sales, but um, I don't care. I really don't. A uh, better example was when I did the Mad Max article at Return of Kings and the world went ablaze. That was on internet. I was all over the place. Uh, I think, did Roosh get 5 million hits on his site? I don't know. And people were like, oh, you just this. You hate women and da, 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 da. then my official video was basically fuck you, don't care. Standing by my word, read the fucking article. I I didn't get I didn't get offended. It was just kinda like, yeah, you're the bunch of normies and conformies and you're dumber than shit. You're a fly The wolf does not get pissed at the sheep. It just does not get pissed at the sheep, no matter how much the sheep buy at him. The modern man reads books. Oh, Piggot, you're fucking killing me. I <laughs> The modern man, okay, or takes in philosophy podcasts. I just, I hate reading. I hate reading. It's just such a time suck. Now, thank God for this stuff. <clears throat> I don't, the modern man does not recycle. Good, yeah, I do not recycle either. Uh, if anything, I just use my recycling bin for extra garbage. Uh, but I'm not sitting there separating aluminum from fucking plastic. Uh, you have more important shit to do in your life. Plus, that's conformist. The modern man buys the best clothes that he can afford. No, 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 Adam's wrong. He's wrong on that one. The uh, student disagrees with the master. Um, I'll have to read through that. I, no. I have fine clothes. You can get fine clothes. And when the situation, the event calls for it, you wear it. But I, no. Uh, I just don't know. It's a waste, waste of money, waste of time. If I, you know, I'll put on a nice shirt, every, you know, but it's usually for, you know, uh, the people that's hosting us, we're going to dinner, the girlfriend, whatever. But I, I do not, I'm not dressing up anymore. I put the monkey suit on enough. The modern man does not live with his parents. You can't be a man, period, living with your parents. The modern man does not, I, what is that? Go to the gym and bring You study to seek knowledge and training. What are you doing? All these actions elicit change in yourself, even though change of itself makes it. But when it comes to their personality, people are unyielding. An attempt to change your personality is an immediate threat upon your self-ego. Your ego is the defense mechanism. It's from all your son. It's who you are, son. But it is not. It's merely a tool that has outlived its usefulness. Oh, being open to... Yes, true. You, sh you should always be open to genuine criticism, genuine constructive criticism. I, have, I always make mistakes. I will make mistakes until I'm dead. The modern man gets a second opinion, true. The modern man has game, true. The modern man does not text while walking. Well, what if you're in the middle of frickin' nowhere? Assuming you even have reception. 
Uh, the modern man gets on with it. <clears throat> the modern man does not have a serious girlfriend. Oh, I'm guilty of that. The modern man does not cry. True. The modern man civilizes his child. Oh, my God. That's a brilliant one. All these faggoty millennials not raising their children. Just, oh, you'll figure it out. If I had a nickel every time, um, I heard, we don't do that here, talking to some little two-year-old child as if it's, you know, Bill Maher or some, you know, Anderson Cooper discussion show. The modern man knows that life is unfair. True, the modern man associates with other men. True. Yeah, most of them. I mean, what, two maybe I disagree with. Two I disagree with. One or two that I'm violating the principles of. Um... But yeah, I mean, it's it's a good it's a good template. I think there's probably too many here. I don't think you need 28 to be a real man to go find yourself a traditional gal. Uh, but yeah, Piggott Piggott knows his shit. Um, I I just would read his book and listen to his podcast. Um, maybe not take those 28 things to heart. But as I said before, just do your own thing. Be a man. Don't kowtow. Um, don't focus. Do not chase the women. And, and then don't, have no expectations. Have no expectations. And, and then maybe, I can't guarantee you anything, then maybe you'll find a traditional wife. Um, that, one other thing, one other thing. It's just as likely, I have the saying, it's easier to make a fat girl thin than it is a hot girl nice. Um, along the same lines, there's an element of training. Because I've seen it happen several times before. You'll grab a 25-year-old girl, she's a party girl. And the guy will basically, you'll be a man. You'll tell her no for the first time the girl's ever heard of the world no. What? Yeah, you go, I'm, I got it. What? What? And then all, now you have the curiosity, plus their ego is shattered, and they can't stand it. And then that's where you lay it down, kind of like where I say, we're, we're, we're having sex by the third date or not, that kind of thing. But this, you know, no, you're not majoring in stupid shit. Do you think I'm going to commit seriously to you, I can get other girls like you at any time. you got to go above and beyond them, and that's not looks. That means you're going to shut the fuck up with your leftist dumbass politics that you've been indoctrinated to have. You're not going to do this feminist bullshit around me. I'm in fucking charge. And here's my goal. I mean, that's another one. I'm going this way. With you or without you. Now, you could come with, but I'll kick you to the curb the second you start nagging me. You're going to push me towards that goal. You're going to support me. You know, If you come along, if I want you, I don't even know if I want you to come with right now. And then that, and then it, then you're allowed to train. Like, no, <clears throat> you're gonna, you're not getting a tattoo. No, you're not dyeing your hair blue. You're getting rid of the nose piercings. You're getting off your fucking ADHD, bipolar, social anxiety, depression drugs or whatever. We're gonna eat healthy. Yes, you're gonna shave down there, and yes, you're gonna swallow. All right, that's. <laughs> and then, oh my God, he told me what to do. God, the age and timing. Oh, that's, oh, I'm just tired of thinking about all that shit, what we had to go through. All right, that's it. You guys got questions? The old captain's got answers over at assholeconsulting.com. Spread the good word of asshole consulting. Go ahead and send videos of interest that you find or the website to any younger people, your friends, your colleagues that might need a swift kick in the ass and a point in the right direction. And uh, like I said, day by day, we're saving three, four, five, God, even ten people at a time, preventing them from making horrible mistakes in their life. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.